to Crazy Cool Crochet. My name is Sylvia and I'm so excited to bring you this project today. I'm sure most of you have heard of temperature blankets, right? Um, where you take the temperature of the day or, and you track it for a year and for each day or however you're doing this, you choose a color uh, that coordinates with the temperature. At the end of the year, you end up with a massively long blanket, the ones that I've seen anyway. And I never really understood the draw of that. But thanks to my dear daughter, she sent me this idea a couple days ago, and I absolutely went nutty for it. This is called the Crochet Granny Square Book Blanket. Books! Books and crochet! What is better in life than books and crochet? Come on. In my life, anyway. So, this idea brings the two together, and what you do is track the books that you read over the year. I'm going to give you a different idea. And you take the book cover, match up yarn colors to the book cover, and make up a granny square. Ta-da! Okay. So you make up a granny square for each book. Now, I don't have the kind of patience to wait a year for this outcome. So what I did was pick the books I already have. And believe me, there's a whole lot more than this. This is just for the, you know, photos. So you take the books that you already have and get started. This way, you don't have to wait a whole year. Now, I'm encouraging you to please watch the whole video because I am giving tips and suggestions along the way. So you want to watch. And it helps the channel if you watch the whole thing. Now, another idea I came up with, and I don't know who came up with this idea, so if you know, comment down below because I would love to credit that person. As far as I'm concerned, this is genius. This is the genius idea of the century. <laughs> well, when it comes to crochet. Um, now, another thing that I came up with was a weight that you'll be able to gift this. So, if you have a friend who's a huge reader, ask them to send you a list and you will know as you watch along how many squares you're going to need for the different size blankets. So, ask them for a list of a specific number and then you take the list with just the titles and then you can do the legwork. You go on uh, the internet, look up the book title, look at the book graphic, grab your colors, and there you go. You can put one together. It won't take a year. Granny squares are pretty fast to work up. And especially because I'm using 8-inch squares, because I want to speed this along. You know, I want to see the finished product. So I use larger squares, and this will help you to be able to do this a lot faster yourself. And then gift it. Believe me, I mean, your friend is going to appreciate this so much because it came from the heart. It came from your passion and combined it with their passion. <laughs> I love this idea. Now you can use any granny stitch. I use a very, very basic one. Again, I'm in a hurry. So you can use whatever granny stitch you prefer. However, keep it consistent so that you can keep your sizes consistent. So when you go to put it together, it's just boom, boom, boom. It goes that much faster. So keep watching. I hope you love this idea as much as I do. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you're going to try it. Okay, so let's get started. So my squares are eight inches and I use seven rounds. Now for every square, I finished off the last round in a white. But of course, you can match up your color scheme and use whatever border you want. Now, why do we use the same last row for every square? This is because when you go to join them, hold on, you want to be able to use the same yarn color as the border. So if you finished 
one with, let's say, black or gray, and the other one with lavender, and then you go to seam and join, whatever color you use, whether you use the gray or the lavender, it's going to show up and look really messy. It will just not look good. So you need to have the same color border. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I choose the colors for each round. And shameless plug, yes, this is my own book. This is my debut fiction novel. I'll leave a link in case you're interested. Okay, so what I do is pick out the different colors. And as you can see, there's going to be a very bright shows up as white on here so the white is already taken care of and the white on the title with the border so i'm not worried about that and then as you can see there is a kind of a gold color so that's that it's got almost a yellowish so there's that one and then the dark orange is featured and then there's like a burnt orange and brown and then this kind of a beige or tan so then what i do is pick out okay which one and this goes a lot faster once you get rolling so which color is featured the least i would say this bright one so then that one would probably be the first round however because i only have a little bit of like the burnt orange, I think I'm going to use this one for the first round. And then I'll use the yellow. And then, let's see, the gold. No, then I think the tan one. And then the gold, because there's more gold than tan. And then at the end, I'll use the brown. Something like that. And of course, the last round will be white. So let's go ahead and get started with the granny square. This is what I do instead of a slip knot. Hook in front of the yarn and then just twist. Do your first chain and there's your knot. One, two, three, four, and then join with the first chain with a slip stitch. And then chain three which will count as a double crochet. Now we're going to do two more double crochets inside the ring. And you can carry the tail around and incorporate it into your stitches. Chain two. And then three double crochets in the ring. chain two, three double crochets again, chain two, and we are working for four corners, so there's one, two, three, so we need three more for the last corner. By the way, I'm using an H hook and a number four. Chain two and now join, but we're going to change color here. So before I join, I'm going to cut off the yarn, leaving a tail, and then choose your next color. I'm gonna go with the tan. So to join the round, you're going to go into the top of that beginning chain three, grab your new color, and slip stitch, tighten, and chain three. Now into that first big space, do two double crochets. And go right into the next big space, into that corner, and do three double crochets.
chain two. And then in the same corner, three more double crochets. And go right into the next corner. Three double crochets. Chain two, three more double crochets in the same corner. And again into the next corner in the large space, three double crochets. Chain two, three more double crochets in the same space. Okay, now we're gonna stop and take a look at the work. So we've got this corner, this corner, this corner. Now over here, we have like half a corner. So there's the three double crochets. So now go into that space and do three double crochets. chain two. And now we're going to slip stitch to join. However, we change color first. So now insert the hook into that starting chain. Grab your new color, bring it through for a slip stitch. Tighten everything up. Chain three. Now in that first large space, tighten again, two double crochets. Now you're going into the next space for three double crochets. Okay, now into the next corner, you're gonna form another corner, which is three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Chain two. And then in the next space, three double crochets. And then you know what to do in the corner. So form another corner. And then in the next space, in the center space, three double crochets, do your corner, three double crochets, and then we'll come back to the last one. Okay, so in that last one, I worked the three double crochets. Remember you already had that first starting chain, two double crochets. So now we did three double crochets, chain two, and then you will join with the new color. So regarding that book, it is out on Amazon. And if you take a look, I'm gonna leave the link, like I said, in the description area below, but you might notice and wonder, hmm, okay, this only has very few reviews out there. Although they're pretty good. <laughs> um, but what happened was, I wrote the book, I published it. Um, I was very, very ill at the time. Um, I came down with a couple of autoimmune situations out of nowhere. Uh, then I ended up, I couldn't work anymore. I had to sell my house. And, and then, you know, the, the sale of the house and everything happened like within a month. I, I had like no leeway. I was going insane. So I had all these major life situations happening so the book was published and then boom, I just sat there. Uh, I did nothing with it. I didn't market it or anything. So that's why there's so very few um, reviews out there. Anyway, okay, back to the project. Cut off the yarn, go to your next color. Okay, so you have a good idea now how to do that granny square. So you're just doing the same thing for every round. When you have your space in here, the center spaces, you do three double crochets. Then you do your corner, three double crochets, corner. So every round will be the same. So if you're going for uh, an eight inch round, 
For me, it took seven rounds, seven rows, and finish off with your main border color. And it's the same stitch. Now to seam the granny squares, we're going to put them right sides together. Wrong sides are out. Oh, by the way, um, you do need to, of course, weave in all the tails. So there's all the tails from that last one that I did. Now I have a video because this is, I, I dislike doing granny squares so much because of this. <laughs> But I've got a video out there where I show how to do that much faster and much easier. I will leave the video, I'll see if I can leave it up in a, a card up on the top. It's called a card, you look for a little white box, or for sure down in the description area. To get there, below the video, you will see where it says show more, or you might just see three little dots, Click on that, it will open up the description area below the video where I've got all the detail or a lot more detail. So take a length of yarn, yarn needle, go to the corner and into that chain two space, insert your hook in both panels, bring it through. I like to do a knot. to secure it better. Now I'm going to use a whip stitch and I'm going to do what I think is the fastest, easiest seam. If you have a preferred seam, go for it. Okay, so I go around the back through two strands. See the chains that formed at the top? That's where you're going through, the two strand chains. There's the other panel. and bring the yarn through. So try to match up stitch for stitch. And just keep going until you get to the end of the row. Right, I'm at the end of the row, going through those stitches. And now what I do is just, again, you do whatever you're comfortable with as far as weaving in that last bit. Then I cut it off and do a knot. I'm, I'm, I'm one for knots. I know a lot of people just can't stand knots, but I'm okay with knots. Okay, so I just bring it through one stitch or one strand. I think I grab two. And then chain one, two, three. Squeeze it down. You got a really good knot and then tie it off. Ooh, that's a good one. I like that join. That's a very nice join there, <laughs> if I should say so myself. I'm going to leave a graphic that will show the sizes for a throw and then for two or three blanket sizes. And then from there, I'll let you know how many squares. Again, I used eight inch squares to speed things up. So I'll give the number of squares using the eight inches. Okay, so that's it for this project. I really truly hope that you are as excited for this as I am. So again, go to the link below the video or, or open up that area, the description area that will take you to the link to my crazy cool crochet Facebook page. In the meantime, please, Subscribe if you haven't, give me a thumbs up down below again, and we'll see you on the next project. Oh, and if you do this yourself, go over to Facebook, like I just said, and post a photo of your finished 
Crochet Granny Square Book Blanket. Thank you for watching.